Welcome to Soul Fire Wisdom with Kate Olson. As an evolving spirit and change adventure navigator, it is Kate's mission to empower and guide you on your path and inspire your truest passions. She will encourage you to share your gifts, speak your truth, and ignite your inner wisdom and purpose. She hopes to do so with a little humor and grace and her own soul fire passion. Kate talks with amazing guests who have embraced the pursuit and are fanning the flames of their own passion, purpose, and soul fire wisdom. Now here's your host, Kate. Good afternoon. Welcome to Soul Fire Wisdom and Thankful Thoughtful Thursday. So I want to just take a minute and tell you what I'm thankful for today. And I think I mentioned that an earlier show that I was kind of sick, not really up to uh, 100% uh, for a long period of time, uh, actually about 10 months. And uh, during that time, I <laughs> accumulated a to-do list that mounted up to 80 things or 80 items on my to-do list. And I'm thankful that I was able to cross off about 20 of those <laughs> in the last week. So it just takes a huge uh, burden to be getting something done and making some progress. So we have a great show planned for today. Um, my guest is uh, Bill Protzman. And he is a man on a mission to raise awareness of the power of music as self-care. He's a successful IT entrepreneur who holds a magna cum laude degrees in piano performance and creative writing and brings music to audiences in non-traditional ways. In 2011, he launched Music Care Incorporated, which is a for-purpose corporation and it teaches practical ways music can be used for self-care. His work was recognized by the National Council for Behavioral Health with an Award of Excellence in 2014. And that's kind of the behavioral health equivalent of winning an Oscar, Oscar, so pretty impressive. His first book, More Than Human, The Value of Cultivating the Human Spirit in Your Organization um, is on Amazon. And his aim is to inspire, delight, and demonstrate the power of music as a tool for self-care. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just introduce him and let him fill in some of the blanks because there's a lot more to what he's doing and the half an hour tends to go really fast so I want to get started. So hello Bill, how are you? Kate, I'm doing well, thank you. And I'm so glad to hear that you are too. Yes. Yeah. So gratitude first. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing with Music Care and happy to. Yeah, happy to. As a piano player, especially as a classical piano player, uh, you don't really approach playing classical music as a profession unless you're one of the five or six people in the world, right, who can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I knew very early on in my piano career, which started with my mom as my teacher and continues today, um, that I had to find a lane that would be different and that would allow me to do what I love to do, which is connect with people over music, but in a, in a sustainable way. And I've done that now for, I don't know, many, many years. I think the, the, the flag in the sand was probably back in 1993 when I started to do a concert that included the audience in my process of giving the concert. So I, I broke the fourth wall and immediately welcome people in as if they were part of the the process of making music happen which in fact an audience is right if a tree fell in the forest so if, if you played and there was nobody in the room would the music still happen 
So the audience has always been a big part of why I want to do this. And I've learned a lot about people and audiences and how we as human beings respond to music. And music care is the, the next flag in the sand that says, hey, we can learn to do this because basically it's a superpower that many of us haven't connected with. It's part of being human to respond to sound and rhythm and to respond deeply and healthfully and just all these other amazing ways. So uh, it, after being that guy on the stage with the piano, I'm now that guy on the stage or that guy across the table or the guy giving a workshop who invites the audience to, to begin to use music with such authenticity and such skill and without having to be anything more than a listener because that's how it really works. I mean, it's nice if you can play or sing, but you don't have to, to use music. All you have to do is hear it. If you can hear it, you can use it. So that's, that's what Music Care does. And along the way, it's been so great because while music therapy is a profession, I'm not a music therapist, but there is a licensed therapeutic profession of music therapy. Mm -hmm. Those same tools have been used by musicians and in fact, by whole cultures of people for thousands of years. And it just seems like in America, we have this difference of opinion. We don't engage music as deeply as say they do in Africa. But here in the United States, we're still in that expert, um, you know, acolyte kind of uh, conversation where if we need something, we go to the expert and the expert, you know, gives us their expertise. And that could feel like therapy or it could feel like healing, you know, chiropractor, acupuncture, whatever it could feel like medicine. But music covers all those bases and you don't need an expert to do it. Once you realize that it's working on you, it gives you another choice. You know, there's another drug in the medicine cabinet that we all have and we can go to it safely, effectively. So I, I teach people that. I'm like a, a, a trainer, personal trainer for music care, right? Yes, well, I did a survey uh, just before starting the, the show on, I asked people what they felt, you know, really passionate about, what, you know, like just, and music one, hands oh, cool. So people do, they, they feel music. So, yeah. um, so how can anyone use uh, music to get ahead in life? The, the use of music starts by putting, checking your judgment at the door. And I have to be careful saying that because the most powerful music for any one of us is the music that we love. So, if you love music that covers the full emotional range and the basic four emotions are fear, anger, sadness, and joy, if you have music for all four of those emotions, that's a pretty good musical diet. But many times uh, when I work with a group or with an individual, they'll have music for joy, but they won't have music that supports them in the difficult emotions, the ones we don't like. And that's okay. I mean, many of us were raised in an environment that said, you know, it's not okay to feel anger. It's not okay to feel fear. In fact, it's some cases, it's not okay to feel sadness, uh, positive mental energy, right? We like the good stuff. We don't like necessarily the feelings that aren't comfortable, but they're feelings and, and we have them for a reason. So checking your judgment and opening up your musical toolkit and saying, okay, do I have music that supports me in sadness? like with the feeling of sadness, no intention of changing it, but just being sad. Do I have music for that? Do I have music that supports me in fear? In fear? I mean, you're going to get scared in life. That's, that's what happens. And when that scared comes in, to be able to not stuff it, but allow it, wow, there's such power in that. And of course, the same with anger. So the process starts with you kind of taking stock and, and investigating your music and how it is there for you and whether it's there for all of you without judgment. Right? There's nothing wrong with you being angry. It doesn't mean that you have chronic anger. If you're angry, it just means that you're angry. And that feeling will come and go. And supporting that feeling lets it go so beautifully with music. You don't have to understand it or understand the science behind it. You just know that you're feeling something. And if you can connect with that on the emotional level, that's very helpful for us. So... Once you've, once you've got music for all those things, then we can do some work. Then we can really get in there and do some work because the same music that lets you unpack and quote negative emotion is doing other things for you too. It's offering you a connection to, to transcendence, to self-actualization, 
to, uh, to other people sometimes. If you are in a place where you need to connect with an adversary, for example, often you can do that in music or you can't do it in any other way. The door is open on music. So that same angry music might be the thing that unlocks your connection to someone else who's also angry, but gives you a common ground where you can move together. And, uh, and, and that's part of the pieces of music that we can engage, that we really need to engage these days. Because look at all the anger leaking out around. The, we don't have a healthy, way, I'm, by, by we, I mean in general people, not just me, not just, you know, we need a healthy way of letting that anger come up and, and release. Yeah. Instead of having it leak out in hurtful, you know, social media posting and all the other stuff. Yeah, you mean Twitter isn't really doing it, huh? <laughs> it's not really doing the job, no. <laughs> so uh, music does. And this is information. I mean, I love the survey. People who are passionate about music. Here's why, people. This is why. Because it's got so much for us that we're not often aware of. And becoming aware of that in America... It's going to need some attention. It needs some help. And science is there for us, holistic, evidence-based. There's lots and lots of science about how music works on pain and how it works on stress and how it works on these, these sort of more palliative things. And eventually, I'm sure, we'll have science that helps us understand why music connects us to consciousness and authenticity and those higher things we all aspire to, the self-actualization process. Oh, we already do have that. Um, it's part of uh, neuroscience. They're showing how uh, music changes the brain. And they're still, you know, coming up with more information on that, but they've already found that out, uh, how it works with learning and how it um, has an effect on a lot of different things. Uh, you know, like autism and um, even the health of the brain, you know, like uh, music. So let's connect the science to what we need. Um, saying you're passionate about music is great, but let's unpack that. Is your passion for music something that lets you uh, be a more authentic person? Is your passion for music something that lets you be kind? Is your passion for music something that lets you have integrity? Um, those are really forward-focused best practices that we have evidence that says th it's good for us to do that. It's good for us to be authentic. It's good for us to be kind. It's good for us to be and have integrity, um, especially in the business world. They've actually got studies out there about how companies that are kind to one another excel versus their competitors that are not kind and don't. So these are good practices. Well, you can, anybody can say thank you. And I'm not just talking about saying thank you, like, you know, thank you, have a nice day kind of thank you. What's it feel like to, to, to be grateful? What does it really feel like? If you can soundtrack that, then you're tapping into your superpower because you don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. And if you've got music that's supporting your gratitude, when you say thank you, you'll engage the feeling of the music, the authentic feeling of gratitude will come up and it'll be clear in your gratitude when you offer it to someone else. Instead of just like, thank you, have a nice day. It'll be, thank you, I really needed that. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's a huge difference in that when you connect to, you, to your emotional um, reservoir. Music does that. Yes, it does actually. So, um... How, how can music um, more effectively um, help with relationships, you know, like business relationships, family relationships, and, you know, well, I, I was going to uh, say why would you want it to, but I think that's uh. obvious, you know, that you would want it to, you want those relationships to be good. Yes. So music is always challenging us to the higher levels of human expression. Uh, that's the invitation in music. Uh, even when the music sounds angry, there's a need for us to feel that anger deeply because part of what we do is resonate with feelings. And being, <laughs> being fully realized as a human being is something that requires you to deal with those emotions just as emotions just accept and allow. 
And when you do that, it unlocks the power in that so that you can be an authentic, effective human being who can feel anger if necessary, who can feel fear if necessary. Those are parts of who we are. So getting to self-actualization is not about ignoring those things or stuffing them. Psychology says that's bad practice, but allowing them. Mm-hmm. So uh, to actually go there with somebody else is also the invitation to music. Um, I always think about when I went to hear Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young at the Hollywood Bowl, and the last half of the concert, I mean, Kate, the last half of this concert, everybody was standing, everybody was singing along, and many people were holding hands. Mm -hmm. Nobody said, stand up and sing along and hold hands. It just happened. People Mm -hmm. wanted to be connected, and, and the music offered that as an invitation, and people just took it. They didn't ask why. They, didn't, they weren't curious about the neuroscience. They just did it. And, and they did it because at the level of our lizard brain, we want that connection. You know, we don't have to think about it up here in the cerebral cortex. When, when, when we get that emotional stimulus from the music, it just works on us if we allow it to. And okay, there are people who weren't. Okay, there, there's a certain inhibition that's there. And that's fine. We're all different people. But isn't that an incredible thing? So... If you're sitting across from your adversary and you both need to reach an agreement about how to move forward on something, uh, and, and I'm using adversary with great delicacy here because that adversary could be your teenage kid, right? That you, want, that you need to do something with, you know, that together you need to figure out how to keep, keep the house clean or whatever it is. Um, one of the ways in on that tough conversation is to triangulate, to say, hey, it's okay. I know you love that music but I can't figure out why I don't love it. Can you help me understand the emotions that you feel when you, when you listen to that music? Help me you know, understand what, how that makes you feel. And if you've got the kind of relationship where you can talk about feelings that openly, God bless you, because especially we parents, we need that. But do you see how offering the emotional content as a separate conversation does the same kind of thing as offering the hands to the people on either side of you. So when, if you can get your teenager to talk about that or your adversary, if that's something in business, it's nice to take a time out and just say, Hey, we've reached this, this, this impasse. Can we just talk about something else for a moment? Talking about music opens up all the parts of us. that are human. And it opens us up differently. I grant grant you that. But it does offer you an objective way of responding to something that isn't about your dug-in position. And to be able to connect with your adversary on that level of human content, that emotional content, is really huge. So I might ask you why you like the song. You say, well, it makes me feel this, this, and this. And And then I would respond and say, well, that's interesting because this same music that you love, I don't care for it because it makes me feel these things that are opposite. And then you have this amazing moment where you go, and both of us are right. Mm -hmm. Your emotions are just as valid as mine. Not that we're comparing, but just because it's interesting, isn't it? How we both respond to this piece of music in different ways that are completely honest (laughs) and completely us. And that moment then becomes magical because you might say to me, oh my gosh, Bill, I never thought of it that way, right? Because it's our thought that interprets. And I can understand why you might feel anger, whatever, about this music, whereas I feel joy about it. Wow, your adversary just became your friend mm-hmm. because they offered you understanding. And, and please, folks, keep in mind, this is a nonlinear process. This is one of the most amazing things about music is you find out very quickly that emotions are not right or wrong when you talk about them in this way and that they're all valid. And in fact, you can have opposite emotions playing in the same music at the same time. And, and that's okay too. (laughs) And, and this non-binary thing that music does for us gives us such an opportunity as human beings to say, and you know what? We are going to have to address that issue where we're deadlocked. And maybe we don't know the way forward right now. But if we can agree that we can work together on something, like understanding each other musically, wow, doesn't that open the way for potential that wasn't there when you were at loggerheads across the table? It's even better if you can make music with your adversary. Uh, We like to drum in our family. So hand drums, 
Mm. And when you drum or when you make music with someone, if you sing with them or chant with them, you, you will get information about them that they can't tell you verbally. We're, we're resonators and we pick up on that. We pick up on the sounds that other people make. And if, even if you were to hear somebody talk in silence, you'd know the emotional content of what they were saying. It would be flat, it would be angry, it would be, you'd know because we're built that way and you can hear it. It's so fascinating. Mm -hmm. So drumming is a great way of bringing or singing together. Drumming way of allowing yourself to have that um, deeper understanding of the authentic person who might be your adversary who's on the drum across from you, <laughs> right? Yes, I totally agree with you. Uh, my son and I actually had that conversation kind of when he was, um, you know, a teenager, young adult. Uh, because he really likes rap music. And uh, I found it somewhat annoying at first. Sure. Um, but he explained to me how, for him, it was calming. And then he he's always been this way with music. Um, but he found some rap songs that he thought I would like. And it turned out I did. <laughs> so I began to um, appreciate a certain aspect of that genre of music. And yeah. uh, it did have the effect that you were explaining. So, yeah, it works. <laughs> I'm so grateful for rap, for hip hop culture in general, because hip, rap is angry music. Uh, there's some, as we've evolved, as genre has evolved, and it now includes other emotion as well, but it, at its core, it's angry music. It's rebel music, you know, it's, it, it's resist the, you know, resist the other culture. But that music has given so many people a safe experience of anger. Mm -hmm. you know, while the words might be talking about things that are violent, there's no requirement that you go and do the things that are in the lyrics in rap. But there is definitely a need to feel that anger safely. Mm -hmm. And I think rap is giving that to millions of people. Um, it, it just increases in popularity. The, the, the more anger that comes in the world, the more that you'll find this cross-pollination of like, you know, black and white rappers and and cultural appropriation and okay fine but it's because there's a need you know that need is very deep we need to feel those feelings mm -hmm. rap's given that gift in many ways to people who wouldn't be able to feel them and who might have wound up uh, you know less than self-actualized in, in one sense like the pathway to self-actualization can be derailed by acting out on uh, on violence you don't want to do that clearly but if you're able to feel it then you can deal with it yeah it gives a voice to that yes. feeling that you're having and it's a voice that you know it doesn't have to be that voice that's yelling at somebody or, yes you know, so. and, and i love your response um annoyance is a great response to rap it 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 indicates that something got in there like somehow the music got into you and it unlocked a little something. And even if that was like just annoying, sort of niggling feeling, just like, oh, I don't like this. Um, that's good. That's a feeling. You know, the hardest thing is when you play rap that's powerful for someone and they just sit there and their effect is totally flat. You know that they're blocking it. And that's a great indication that they're blocking other things too that are related to the content of the, the emotional content of that music. So you've got an opportunity, right? introduce somebody to anger in a safe way. Maybe they've never been, been to anger in a safe way before. So uh, that, that's, that's, the, that's the gift because you know if you start to do that work, at some point the lights are gonna come on. And when that, when that beautiful realization kind of comes home and you can see in somebody's eyes that they've made it, that you know, they've made the connection, I live for that moment. That's a great moment. So can you tell us about your online course, uh, how to create and use um, music rights? Uh, sure. And 
you know, how that helps in dealing with life's challenges? You bet. This is, uh, this use of music for me is ceremonial. Uh, coming from where I come from as a classical piano player, there's always something that's a little artificially formal about a classical piano recital. And I've used that to my advantage to kind of make fun of that whole, you know, paradigm. Uh, but it doesn't take away anything from the, the, the sort of holiness of music. There is a spiritual component to music. And to not bring that into your practice of it ignores a huge potential that we all have. So the course, which I call a quest, is about using music in a structured ceremonial way to give you an experience that is safe and powerful and self-actualizing and ameliorative and just all of the components of that, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, are packed into the use of music as a tool. And to do that, I couldn't think of a better word than ritual, because <laughs> there's, there's a certain ritual approach to offering a concert. Even when you go to a stadium, the music is, is, is organized in a way that the musicians know is going to have an effect. So learning to use music for yourself, for your own rituals and your own self-care, is about learning to organize it and play it in a way that gives you that journey that you need. And in many ways, it's a healing journey. <laughs> so we want to include all of those healing components as well as open the door for the potential that we talked about. It's even when the music is about understanding what it means to feel anger, that also opens up the potential for some otherness and consciousness and oneness and God, if that's your word or whatever. We want to make sure that's part of it too. So Quest dot musiccare.net is the site and there you can engage with the course and there's lots of free stuff and I'm, I'm you know I'm an authentic kind of mission here and I don't do marketing the way that people do with funnels and email lists and stuff like that I just offer amazing content if you need it and you want to come in on a free level I'm happy with that you want to buy the course that's fantastic uh, but I'm I'm there basically to enable whatever your engagement with music needs to be to mind you in the place that you're in now so um, it's all there, quest.musiccare.net. Find me, Google me, whatever. I'm there for you. Okay, great. Um, we're almost running out of time. I knew it would be a little short, uh, but I want to have you leave one last thought about music or what you do uh, with the listeners. Uh, Sure. Um, as Kate's mentioned, there's so much science about this now. And that is hugely helpful for people who are struggling and, and want something else. You know, they want another alternative to pain. And to compress all of the science and evidence that's out there down to a level where we as a human can actually use it and make something change with it. I like to say, change your music, change your life. And you don't have to have the direction in that. It doesn't imply that you know what your life needs to be. What it implies is that if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling lost, if you don't belong to something, try changing up your music. Challenge yourself. And if there's a genre you haven't explored, see what that has for you. See what connections might be available to you with that music. Like Kate found with her son. You know, you did this. You found a common ground, right? So change your music. Change your life. Yes, I'll tell you, uh, when I'm driving, I actually find that I like to listen to some of that rap music. So it yeah. kind of takes care of that feeling that driving can invoke in you. <laughs> so, yep. Yep. Okay, well, that is actually all the time we have for questions today. I want to thank you for... Uh, spending the time to come and uh, talk to people about this uh, today. And can you tell everybody um, how they can get in touch with you and, you know, what your contact information is? So I don't often do this, and I very rarely I've heard anybody that still hands out a phone number, but I would like to hand out a phone number to your audience. Okay. It's toll free and it will reach me. Um, it reaches the, the IVR and then goes through to me, leave a voicemail, it's confidential. And I'm happy to talk to you. Um, I love nothing more than doing this. So let's continue the conversation. Here's the phone number 
785-8596. So toll free 800-785-8596. That'll get through to me and, and, and we can talk and see where you would like to go. Okay, and he did already give the, the website for the music care.com and uh, you can go to the radio website, which is uh, soulfireradio.com, uh, click on guests and then uh, find Bill's picture and under his picture, uh, you'll find a website uh, connections and I believe his phone number is there too. I think that was that 800 number is there. So, Fantastic. So um, we have another great show planned for next week, and that is uh, the art and soul of an American folk singer. And my guest is Roseanne Olson. And I would like to say she's related to me, but as far as I know, she's not. But you'll enjoy uh, hearing about her She's both a musician and a photographer, so we'll hear how those two uh, come together at, in her passion. So thank you for listening today, and I look forward to uh, having you join us next Thursday at 1 p.m. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you for listening to Soul Fire Wisdom with Kate Olson. We hope you enjoyed the show. If we made you laugh, brightened your day, or sparked a new thought, we have succeeded in our mission. Join us next time when we'll share more secrets and truths and all the magic of transformation that is the journey to soul fire wisdom. Always remember, be fierce in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire.